Hi there guys, this is Nick Price from turnipstarfish.co.uk uh, I wanted to bring you today a new Photoshop uh, digital painting tutorial. This is a technique called uh, painting in values. Um, lots of artists are using this technique to produce their digital work. Uh, and basically they are painting in a grayscale image and then they will be adding colour at a later stage. The idea behind this is that instead of as an artist having to kind of uh, worry about the colour and the values of the colour in your artwork all at the same time, they worry about just the values of tone and how that creates the best possible image, like how you create uh, the centre of attention or the areas of focus in the image through the use of uh, tone and value. Um, and then after you've made those decisions, you can add the, the colour ranges to, to sit over it. Um, it's best if you watch and it hopefully will kind of make sense. Okay, so this image I'm using today is just something I've quickly put together for this tutorial. It's certainly uh, not an award-winning picture by any means, but it's just something to show the kind of process. So first of all, uh, I'm just breaking down the structure of the head. The eyes are about halfway down the shape of the head. The nose should be halfway between the eye and the chin and the mouth will be halfway between the nose and the chin. Okay, for this picture I'm just using a standard brush in Photoshop. I'm using the general shapes that I use for most of my drawings, so people will know I use a, a square for the rib cage, and I use kind of square for the lower torso, the, pit, the hips and the pelvis. And I'm very quickly just um, putting in the generic body shapes. With my eraser tool, I'm just taking out some of my guidelines um, to neaten it up a little bit because I'm going to completely produce this artwork digitally, as you can see. I haven't scanned in a drawing this time. My brushes and my erasers I'm using at uh, probably about a 30% opacity so I get a softness to it so I can rework over it as a sketch. Um, as you can see now, what I have done is I've created a new layer and I'm just putting in a grey wash behind it. I'm being quite carefree about this. I'm just blocking in grey values at the moment. This technique won't work if I've got pure white or pure black as a spectrum of value. So everything um, kind of needs a value of grey to be able to pick up the colour later on. It's a bit weird, but you'll see later on how that works. So to start off with... I just block down a generic grey, and then I'm building up the image. Now, as a as a as a a grey scale image or a colour scale image, I'm still thinking about it as a three dimensional object. So I'm thinking about where my light source is coming from, thinking about each part of the figure as three dimensional. So I'm thinking about where the light hits, where the bounce light is hitting, uh, where the shadow lies because of the form of the shape. Um, I've done a bit of extra detail on the eyes because generally speaking when you're looking at a character image um, well in the real world when we're speaking to each other and we're talking to each other we look at our eyes we look at each other's eyes that's how we communicate and in an image an illustration of a character you're doing the same thing you want to the viewer to be drawn towards the eyes so I've just made sure there's a little bit more detail and it's a little bit sharper there in the image even the hair, people often ask me, how do you how do you draw hair? The hair, as I'm just blocking it in roughly, I'm just still thinking it about... I, I talk to everyone as a, to think about hair like it's a wig, it's like a helmet, it's an object on top of the head, and it still has form. So at the first stages, you're certainly always depicting it in that way. So you're thinking about the top, the sides, the front of the form of the hair, and where the light's hitting, and again, where the light doesn't hit where there's bounce light uh, and all those elements. That will give you the shape of the hair and then you can build on the detail afterwards. As you can see now, quite clearly I'm just blocking in a background value. Um, I will start to think about darker sides to the value and lighter, lighter sides to the value in the background so she sits off the background image. So I'm where she is lighter in the hair I'll have a darker uh, background colour and where she is darker in the hair I'll have a lighter background colour so she sits off the image because this is all about value and how someone sits off the page and how the viewer is drawn to the image. I've added, as you can see I'm adding now different bits of line detail over the image 
just to strengthen it and make it tighter. Um, and I've add, started to add some generic kind of direction lines for the hair. Um, this sits over my rough form painting, so this just adds areas of detail that kind of describes this is hair and it's made of many strands, but I'm not going to literally draw every single strand. I'm tightening up the outline of, of this drawing, uh, again with an opacity brush, a slightly see-through brush, so I can just sketch on those lines like I would with a normal pencil on paper and just using my eraser tool as well, just tightening this up to make it to make it dance on the page. And I should always be thinking about my thick and thin lines when I'm doing this. Remember your thick and thin in your line work is creating weight in the line itself and that weight is the same as the form in my grayscale painting. Right, this is where it gets interesting. So I finished my grayscale picture and now what I've done is create is a new level and I've changed the layer property on that level to colour. And this is the clever bit. Now I've done that, I can pick a flat colour and just paint in the area of colour and it remembers the values of the grayscale onto the colour. And you can kind of see that in the image. Um, it is quite hard to explain, but basically it remembers all the, the lights and the darks of that colour. Um, or it doesn't remember it, it puts that on because of the grayscale image I got before. And that's what's quite a quick process for this kind of way of working. And as I said earlier, it's a way of working where you're exploring the values of the image first so you can decide what you want to stand out in the image and what you want to sit back in the image. And then after you've, you're happy with those values in the image, you can then just pick your colours and start working them in. And it automatically understands the range of colour and you're just blocking in then those flat colours. So I'm not having to colour pick lots of ranges of for instance flesh tone, I've got one flesh tone and it remembers the high the high bits, the, the bits where the light is hitting, the bits where there's some car shadow etc etc. When you've worked on this process actually what people tend to do is then flatten those layers down and they will then use traditional Photoshop techniques painting on top of it in, in detail all the ad additional elements that they feel required to make it a stronger image. So. I hope that kind of makes sense, but basically what we just looked at is we create a grayscale image. After the grayscale image, which is a, a description of the values of our image to help help tell the viewer of the picture what we want them to look at, so where the center of attention is, what's going on in the image. We then create a new level. We create We create a layer property on that level, on the layer property of color, and that allows us to drop color um, just straight underneath the values and it creates all that tonal kind of color work in one go, if that makes sense. Um, have a go at it if you've used a bit of Photoshop before. It's a really fascinating way of working. Um, I think it probably is a stronger technique with a more a, a larger image with several characters where you're really forcing the viewer kind of into areas of the picture to help describe the picture itself. Um, as a one-off character illustration, it might not show the best technique of how that's worked, but that's basically the process. If you if you liked this information, then remember to check out our other tutorials at turnipstarfish.co.uk and uh, we'll check you out again soon. Cheers, bye bye.